Happy birthday. When is the birthday? Mine is tomorrow. Mine tomorrow. is Tuesday. Oh, goodness. Yes. Thank you. Yes, you think I've got them all. There's the piece, and then there's another piece. So, and then the Okay. So there's the piece. Sensing the altar at the processional.
So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Welcome to St. Peter's Episcopal Church this Easter morning, broadcasting from WKRM 103.7. Our orders of worship and a live stream of the service may be found on our website, stpeterscolumbia.org. The opening hymn this morning is hymn 207. Contrary to the number that's in your order of worship, it is 207. Also, because it is Easter and the children will be losing their minds in anticipation of the Easter candy hunt, there will be no children's sermon. You are welcome. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you can welcome you in person very soon.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. People, Peter began to speak to, to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, reaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all he did to both, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. enter 
The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you are also, also you are being saved. If you her- hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed to you as of first importance what I had heard and had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. And he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, as I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord.
the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. In the finale of the fourth season of the TV sitcom Friends, Ross, played by David Schwimmer, prepares to exchange wedding vows with his bride-to-be, Emily. They stand with a minister in front of all their friends, including Rachel, played by Jennifer Aniston, with whom Ross has shared an on-again, off-again, agonizingly star-crossed romance ever since the first episode of the first season. And the minister begins, friends, family, we're gathered to celebrate here today the joyous union of Ross and Emily. May the happiness we share with them today be with them always. Now, Emily, repeat after me. I, Emily, I, Emily, take thee, Ross, take thee, Ross, to my lawfully wedded husband in sickness and in health till death parts us, as my lawfully wedded husband in sickness and in health until death parts us. Now, Ross, repeat after me. I, Ross, I, Ross. Take thee, Emily. Take thee, Rachel. Uh, Emily, Emily. <laughs> Ross's friends, of course, are shocked, and no one more than Rachel. She looks around at everyone. Everyone looks around at her, and looking cautiously at Emily, the minister concludes, shall we go on? <laughs> and as the script says, the picture fades to black. That's it. That's the end. The show and the season are over. After this cliffhanger, millions of Americans went wild with urgent speculation. What would happen to Ross and Emily? What would happen to Rachel? What would happen to their merry band of friends? And for these questions to be answered, the viewing audience had to wait four and a half months for the next season's premiere. And when it finally came, so many tuned in that the sitcom, which frankly had begun to show signs of wear, found rejuvenation, and would continue for another six seasons. A cliffhanger is a shocking plot twist at an episode or chapter's end in which a character is put into such physical or emotional peril that the audience feels compelled to watch or read the next. The term itself comes from, the, from Thomas Hardy's 1872 novel, A Pair of Blue Eyes in which at the end of one chapter, the hero literally hangs from a cliff. A cliffhanger is a moment when the present is so shattered by a calamity that it demands an answer from an uncertain future about what will happen next. Today's gospel reading from St. Mark ends with a cliffhanger. We just heard about what happened to the myrrh bearers, those three women who three days after Christ's crucifixion brought spices and scented oils to his tomb to anoint his body. And when they arrive, they see a mysterious young man in a white robe who tells them to go tell the disciples that Jesus is risen from the dead. And so the women leave. But they do not just leave. They flee. The Greek word is fuego, as if they disappeared. And as they flee, their bodies are overwhelmed with, as the Greek says, tromos kai ekstasis, a trembling and almost ecstatic surge of awe and terror. And Mark concludes that as they flee this way, they told no one, for they were afraid. That's it. That's the end. Fade to black. Unlike the other three Gospels' depiction of Easter morning, there is no encounter with the risen Christ. There is only the women and their uncontrollable fear. Why does Mark's Gospel end like that? Well, you'll remember that according to church tradition, Mark was not so much the author of his Gospel as he was its stenographer. It was the Apostle Peter who told Mark about the life of Christ, and Mark wrote down what Peter told him. Twenty-five years earlier, Peter had left Jesus' followers in Jerusalem to care for Jesus' followers in Rome as their bishop. But at the moment of this storytelling, Peter is in a Roman prison, waiting for his own crucifixion, which will come at any moment. 
See, Peter had been caught up in the dragnet the Emperor Nero cast in 64 AD when he launched his horrific persecution of the church in Rome. And so there he is, on death row, with the clock ticking. Peter wants to give, wants Mark to give Jesus' Roman followers neither a simple history, much less his own memoir. Peter's gospel has a different purpose. In Nero's persecution, those in Peter's flock who were, had not been arrested or tortured or killed are in hiding. They are terrified, and Peter knows it. He knows that they are living in a cliffhanger. In the calamity that they suffer, they desperately yearn to know what will happen next. Will Jesus return to rescue Peter? And if Jesus does not, can they trust Jesus to take care of them? Peter's gospel to Mark is not a sermon that introduces Jesus to people who've never heard of him. It is an encouraging love letter to those who have heard of Jesus, have given themselves to him, but are afraid that he will not be with them when they need him the most. So, This is why Peter ends his gospel abruptly with a cliffhanger. He draws his flock's attention to the terrified women at the tomb because those women and his people are in the same situation. The myrrh bearers were terrified because they looked for Jesus, could not find him, and did not know what would come next. And Peter's flock is terrified because in their suffering, they are looking to see Jesus, but completely understandably, they are so blinded by fear that they just can't. And therefore, completely understandably, they just can't trust in what is coming next. So Peter is trying to reassure them that just because they do not see Christ does not mean that Christ has abandoned them. Just as the risen Christ was at work while the myrrh bearers were in the dark and afraid, so too He is at work in them, whether they see it or not, or believe it or not. For the myrrh bearers, for the first century Roman Christians, and frankly for us, the resurrection is bigger than everything that we do not understand and anything that we fear. All right, so here ends the academic lecture. It may or may not have been interesting. But we're not here today for an academic lecture. We're here today because whether we know it or not, whether we understand it or not, whether we believe it or not, we need help. This morning, in this room, some of us, Many of us, I dare say most of us, are living from day to day like one cliffhanger after another. And even though we have no control over anything, really, we're dying to find out what happens next. A surprising health diagnosis for us or for someone we love, that is a cliffhanger. An unexpected reversal in our job or financial security. That is a cliffhanger. A simmering or recently revealed addiction or other unhealthy coping mechanism. That is a cliffhanger. Or a breakdown in our marriage or in some other vital relationship. That is a cliffhanger. And perhaps, worst of all, we may be just exhausted by trying so hard to single-handedly create ourselves as the person, the spouse, the parent, the child, the friend, the person that we have always wanted to be or have been expected to become. You and I are dying of something all the time. And so we have come here today to find, at the very least, a temporary anointing salve of heaven-scented peace. But like the myrrh-bearing women who came for a burial, 
but found something unexpected. We find here today the possibility that even in our fear, our fatigue, or our grief, God is already at work to remake everything new in us. Christ is risen from the dead. All of our failures, our sins, our shame, and our weariness, all of our fears, they are dead. His resurrection and His healing grace are far larger than anything that kills us. On November 23, 2010, in Weld County, Colorado, Deputy Sam Brownlee, aged 43, was killed in the line of duty by a suspected gang member after a high-speed pursuit. He left behind two sons from a previous marriage, Tanner and Chase, and two stepchildren from Heather, whom he had married just a year before. Tanner was 15 when his father died. Five years later, Tanner and his brother learned that they had a chance to bid on their father's squad car at a charity benefit for survivors of law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty. And understandably, they wanted that car. Before the auction, Tanner told a reporter, it would mean a lot to me and my brother. We've been through a lot. And so having tapped into his life's savings, and after a successful GoFundMe appeal, they raised $12,500, which was how much the Kelly Blue Book valued the car. So Tanner felt confident that his bid for his father's legacy would be enough. On the day of the auction, as the bidding rose from $5,000 to $7,500, Tanner made his offer with everything that he had. But he was shocked when the bidding continued. Among various bidders, it rose from $12,500 to $36,000 to $42,000, then to $57,000. Tanner trembled and wept while his father's squad car, his last connection with his father, slipped away. What would he do next? What could he do next that would bring him some kind of peace? As his mother held and comforted him, Tanner watched as the car was finally sold to a local farmer for $60,000. But no one could have imagined that the farmer after accepting keys from the auctioneer, would walk over to Tanner, say, Tanner, here is your car, and drop the keys into his hand. The two had never met, but the farmer had heard Tanner's story, and he decided that he would spend whatever it took to help Tanner and his brother find some peace. And in so doing, he also helped many other unknown officers grieving orphans. This is how God works in resurrection. In healing one of us, He heals all of us. And in healing all of us, He heals all in us. What always seemed to be the end for all of us is now just a new beginning for us all. Every day, you and I live our story as if we are hanging on the edge of a cliff. But when we fall, Christ has come to catch us, to raise us up, and to bring us home to the Father. So, we no longer run away from tombs in trembling fear. We run with hope to the healing and to the love that will never end. No matter what we fear, no matter what is killing us, God and Christ has come to start a new chapter, a new episode, a new life, one that starts outside of the empty tomb and never ends. Here is your absolution. Here is your resurrection. Here is your freedom from everything that you fear. So with him, shall we go on? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
May we please rise for the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For Joseph, our president, William, our governor, Sheila and Charles, our mayors, and for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace in Jerusalem and the church in Jerusalem, and for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, Chris, our rector, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. For all who serve God in His church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for those on our continuing prayer list. Hear us, Lord. <laughs> We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We, trust in you. we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May we please rise. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the name of Christ. Peace. There's Rich. Peace, gentlemen. Peace. Peace. forgetting um sorry I'll ask, um francis tuck's children are henry and john russell
Avengers Assemble. Uh, let me say, uh, Happy Easter. Thank you for being here with us today. Uh, a special welcome to those of you for whom this may be the first time you're with us. Um, you are a gift from God, uh, not only you in and of yourself, but you help us view our life together uh, with new eyes. Uh, you can help us extend our welcome to you, whether you're just passing through or looking for a church home, by either giving us a contact information in that red uh, guest book at the entrance or by filling in one of those white envelopes um, in your pews. I've got to say, uh, I'll keep this brief, um, so much thanks to the Altar Guild, Bridget Fancher and all the others who throughout this Holy Week have just been um, brilliant in keeping the worship going forward. Also, the Flower Guild, uh, led by Anne Chicoline, the, the flowers today are just stunning, and we thank all of you uh, who gave them in thanksgiving or memory of others. And I've got to say, finally, um, thank you so much to our choir, to our music ministry, and to Dr. Peter Douglas, who's been such a gift to us throughout this season of Lent, who has, um, uh, is leading us, I can see, into an energetic uh, chapter in, uh, in that ministry. Thank you all. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Sanctuary candle today is given to the glory of God, thanksgiving by B.I. Natty, celebration of the birthday of Nancy Natty, and also uh, by Ben and Christian Rather for the birthday of Lila. The holy sacrifice this morning is offered to the glory of God in thanksgiving for his many gifts and blessings. We pray for peace in the world, in the Ukraine and the Holy Land. We pray for peace in our nation and all who serve in it, all soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, coast guard, agents of law enforcement, and all first responders. We pray for our own sick or suffering, lonely, weary, or grieving. Of your charity, please pray for the repose of the soul of Russell Rip Keith Tuck, father of Trevor and grandfather of David and John Russell. Also, uh, for the soul of Billy Miller, son of Karen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed in Christ rest in peace. And may light perpetual shine upon them. We also give thanks to God for the birth of Delilah Daniel, born yesterday, daughter to Clark and Brooklyn. We pray for our families, for all whom we love and serve, and we always pray for children. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling His death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. In the Episcopal Church, all baptized Christians are welcome to come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ.
love and in union with those who cannot worship with us in person today, together we offer an act of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And though I may be separated from others today, let me never feel separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Easter candy hunt and beverages, festive beverages for the adults are found outside after the service. Please do not run out and hurt anyone. That goes for the children too. <laughs> May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you this Easter day and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.